Beep, 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 beep. I saw her sitting in the... Hey, everybody, welcome to the Cows Hills Podcast. She didn't seem to care. Ooh, hey, how you guys? Hello, everybody. Listen, Hello. here's the deal. Let me explain what's going on here this week. Here's the deal. Our, our, our visit with Peter, Peter Holsapple, uh, went so long. We didn't want to put you guys to like two hours and whatever. Yeah, uh, so people don't in. like that. Nah, because we we got things to do, right? So we part one and part two. But we like the stories. Yeah. So this is going to be part two of Peter's episode that we're entering here. And we didn't know it was going to go on that long and that we're going to do this. So that's why we're visiting with you and letting you know. that I could have told you because he's one of those guys who has like the most unbelievable history of life. Oh, you got the good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff still coming in the interview. This guy's been through yeah. it. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. I it would be I'd great. Got, I wish I'd have gotten into the Peter Holse Apple trio uh more later part of his life where he's making these records and it's him and these two guys. We've Oh, we I thought you were reverting back to Dana and the Blue it's Jays. That trio. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, anyway, all right. What do we have today? So we're, here, we're the Council's Podcast, episode oh. one hundred and ten, I think. No, Whoa. no. So. Ding, 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 so. ding, ding. Oh all boy, you guys! I have a truckload of fun stuff coming. What, Bob? Every one of them up online on demand. Everyone, Everyone demanding up online. We have a lot. You can either listen or watch it. You can do it both ways, uh, people. If you're working and you can't watch it, go ahead and listen. And then when you get home. Yeah, and then when they get home, they can uh, look in on it to see what we were talking about yeah. that they really didn't understand because they weren't looking at it. Right. And the simplest way, just go to YouTube, put in Council's podcast, boom, you're in. Okay, just you can see all the episodes, Easy. and it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. So it is a lot of fun. You know, we, hey, we I even it. found Russ watching it the other day. We must be funny. I, I'm at my house. I'm walking through and I hear him chuckling away, laughing away. I think he's on the phone in the office. Yeah, he's watching. I go, are you watching our pie? He goes, yeah, you guys are hysterical. I'm like, I don't know. All right, we have, we have moments of hysterical. I love that. You know, I mean, because- God, you think you get enough. Anyway, yeah. so I'm cute. So- hey, let's talk about something new that well, we two. think. Huh? Yeah. Oh, go it. ahead. What were you going to say, Susan? Well, I don't know. I want to talk about how I'm going to have a lot of cool gadgets coming up. Stay tuned. Go ahead, Bob. So Susan's going to be our, our special effects square, we can call it, I guess. Okay. Oh, already and, got it going on. Who else has Bora Abiora Bahadnu? But here's here's a big uh, thing in our life, okay? So Rhythm of the World's out, right? And yes. We're loving it. And uh, people are still talking about it. The reviews are awesome. It's still out there. And we we're sold every that. album we had out. It's only a year old, so it's still a baby. And there's just, we got a lot going on, okay? A lot going Especially on. with our, our publishing and our song placement kind of attack that's going to be coming up. And then Paul made up a, 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 a good point, okay? He said one time, you know, it seems when we get the word out, Everyone likes the word, you know, like when we're out performing, we have great meet and greets and everything's doing great. And we sell a lot of stuff and people want it because they hear it. Right. And how do we get, if we could just get the word out and that's when you go to television or some kind of big thing, but things are hard. Right. But here's what we thought publicist, right? What's the definition publicist. of a publicist to get the word out. Getting yep. the word out. And we really yep. did discover y'all and much to, I think, well, I'll just speak for myself. My surprise that we brought the rhythm of the world out, a vinyl, CDs, Not every night they were sold yeah. out. Like we are finding you guys, once we bring it to the human, the human wants to receive it. And this is too big of a world and universe for little people to do things anymore. You can't be a kid and, and then all of a sudden end up on Sullivan and now it's happening. It doesn't go like that. So you have to pay a guy to take you and everything you have and bring that word out to the public public assist, assist, right. public <laughs> assistant. And we're getting one. Can I we'll tell how? We'll keep you we... posted. We'll keep, yeah, keep posted, posted on the pursuit. Yes. But but um, this is, and we've done the market research. As yes. you just alluded, we've done it. And, and, the, and the answer coming back is, if you can get to the audience, the audience is receptive. And they that is it. just all we want to yep. do then. But we want to expand that ability to get 
to them. You know, it's the fight for the shingle attention. You know, you can hang your shingle. What if every single person bought our record and then listened to Lend a Hand and then every single person helped out and it was over? (gasps) And I'd like to uh, just personally address the up to 4 million purchasers of the single hair. Yeah. Like, hey, where yeah. are you? Where are you? Hey, guys, come there? on. Yeah, let's get the word what out. Okay, let's get the word out. Right, right, right. It's like You're going to Wendy's for crying you know, out loud. You, you can do... You can do a million interviews, okay? You can interview for great magazines. But in that interview, in that great magazine, only so many people are reading that magazine. It's just the way life is, you know? Yeah. And so, well, it's always and so, been, though, Paul. Well, yeah, but we're what we're running into now is that, you know, there's just, there really isn't any clear way, except there's a million ways, but no right. clear way. It's kind of weird how that is to get yourself out there. And so right. we're thinking the publicist is going to help us with this next, next leg of this. We do. And listen, yeah. let's review. The model has not changed, my friends. Check it out. 1967, the planet is still the same size, but the world is not. And there's a finite amount of record companies. There's a finite amount of bands. There's a finite amount of stuff still left, a finite amount of TV shows. Back when we were kids, the world was small enough where the big way to get out to the public was on one show. And the whole yeah. bloody world saw you that yeah. night. Yeah. Okay. True. So now it's what true. we have, so product, yes, we have it. It's 2023. The the planet is big and the world is almost bigger than the planet now. Now we're crunching it. And there's how in the the one team. And does anybody even watch a movie anymore? They're scrolling through every one you have. And then by the time you're done, you never even watch one. It's too big, too much. So we feel in the giant world in which we live. This is our only prayer, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yep. We got to keep pushing and pushing. And 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 Christmas time is coming out. Absolutely. You know, hey, we're a not idle. Reminder. We are not idle. While we're the no. world, we're pursuing that thing. We never stop. Okay, we're out playing. You know this, everybody. We perform. We just uh, any interview, every interview, every podcast. We can be had. Every, and everything. We everything. love to spread the word. Christmas. No, time it's not a full out. sentence to the cow sills. We don't we're even know. It's it. true. We're gonna do a morning and, radio well, tour, November of Christmas stations and Christmas music. It's gonna Christmas yeah. up, guys. Yep. So, you know, we're, we're, we're on the, we're on the cusp of it all, you know, and, and if we were younger, we would go to ourselves, we'd go, oh man, this is giving me gray hair, you know, <laughs> but we already got the gray hair. So I think what's happening now is we're losing hair. Yeah. <laughs> this is giving me a sagging face. Is what this yeah. is giving me. <laughs> because here's what we know. We know Christmas time is a nice Christmas carol that can can Lovely be done in multiple song. languages by multiple people. We know that we have a great story. And by the way, our brother Johnny Boy, we're the four left. Oh. We the family is on board at Christmas time with That's us. Right. So Johnny will be a Christmas bonus. A around. John's our Christmas bonus. Our, 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 our. John's our Christmas bonus. Our <laughs> <laughs> and then some good years in winter. I Wonder just saw him in a t shirt standing next to us, Christmas bonus. <laughs> Yeah, and, and this is a digital release with nice artwork by Gail Marowitz and that. Yes, Gail. yes, yes, yes. We, oh, it's so pretty. It'll it is so fun. traditional, like our era of Christmas albums. That's what I like about it. Go, Paul. Well, if we don't have a, C, a, a hard CD, where does all that artwork become work? I mean, who's... Uh, it's what they uh, yeah. click. It's the square they click on at um, on Omnivore Records and Tapes uh, that you click on, and it and it opens up the four pages, the songs, the three songs. You're reading it on your computer. The, the cover. Okay. Is, the cover is that square, uh, a holiday offering from the cow sills. Yes. What see. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so people want to go to Omnivore to see that. Then it needs to be yeah, a we'll solid have item. It on our website. We'll have it linked. Up. Everyone will have it. It'll be everywhere. Okay. The way okay. the world was everywhere, you know. Yeah. So we'll yeah. just, and that's good. But yeah. Not like holding it though. Solid. Not like well, maybe next Christmas we'll make a solid so people can hold it. Well, yeah. you know, let's talk of a Christmas album. I mean, we've never done one. It's so we are cool. gonna do one. We can't leave the planet without a Christmas yeah. album. Are you crazy? In fact, you know how you know you are gonna do it because you keep putting it off. Uh, yeah, well, well, you know, Daddy. We better get to it then. We better get to it. I know. I know. Yeah, see, but then there's the theory that if you don't do something that you've been wanting to do, it kind of makes sure you stay alive. Because if you do it, then you're done. 
Oh, like dad didn't oh, want to finish the Mexico house because he's afraid if he finished building it, he'd die right away. Oh, like if okay, he had something he still had to do, it would delay the death thing. It didn't work out. There's for plenty. Death. There's plenty to still have to do, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Look, there's way too much for this old. I had a friend come up to me the other day. Yep. I'm going to retire at 62. OK, so that's in two years. And I'm like, you know what? Zip it. Yeah. Oh, OK, that's good. <laughs> I don't want to hear about your retirement you're going to have in two years from now and travel in your RV while I am still sitting here pounding the pavement. Hey, Susan, you. all those people are going to regret it when they get to like 68 and 67 or 68 and 69. They're going you're to realize, to Jesus, death. I let all that money go. I should have, you know, I should have I done know. this or done that. It's it's just done that or done that for sure. But I feel like this, Polly, if I retired too early and 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 did did what I thought was all the fun things I always wanted to do. And now I'm 70 and I'm bored to death and just getting old with nothing to look forward to. See, there's two ways to look at like how you'll never retire or you'll retire super late. It's like you stay in the game. You're vibrant. You're you're in the now. You're not even old, you know, and, and then so young. She sounds so young and you are young. You're 10 years younger because she's talking but, but, about you and me, Paul. Oh, oh, when I get to be 70, I'm going, hmm, I'm 74. Paul's 70. What's she talking about? I'm yeah. talking, Susan. Listen, we are those ages. We're not, you're not going to be bored. Okay. I mean, look at what we're facing a limited TV no, series. No, we're all facing this hey, non boredom. Go hold on. on. We're facing opening a, a, a big tour with the band for a famous act. We're going to get opening act on a big tour. We believe that. And we're 70 and 74. And we're going to have, a, <laughs> you know, she's making fun of me visually. If anyone wants to jump over, you can see it. I'm but making fun here. of me trying oh, yeah. to keep up with you Mick Jagger types. Hey, listen, oh, we are on, I keep doing don't you understand Paul and I are sprinters now because of our age. You're still in a nice loping run, but you're going to yeah. pick up the pace too, girl. Oh, you know, this is hilarious guys oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. look it's, don't let this hair color fool you all right and yeah, the fuzz exactly. i have on my filter here <laughs> and the color in my room <laughs> remember susan stamina what? this winter we're i got stamina. stamina dudes i went kayaking the other day look i have guns okay. i come home from happy together with guns i went kayaking and i killed it I was just Susan, a kayak trip. I'm not, I'm talking about happy together three months out in the summer. That Stand kicks up. my ass. You're not going to get that from a kayak trip. You got No, I got this from happy yeah. together, but on the kayak trip, they came in oh, hand. Okay. All right, everybody. So I've listen. exhausted <laughs> them. <laughs> listen, we got to introduce Peter again. Whole sap. Right. Okay. Part two of Holdy. This is part two of our big visit with Peter. We love the guy. Um, uh, not best outlaw ever. As artists and musicians, you know, paths seem to always reconnect. Uh, yeah. Just stay at it long enough, and Peter's not quitting. And certainly we're not. No, that's been made clear. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there's no, no quitting in us. We have an arts and entertainment Christmas special today. There's no quitting in house ill. All right, guys. We're probably going to have our own TV special soon. I yeah. Think yes, let's idea. say that. We are going to have it. And guess what we're also going to have? And you guys, this is my lips to God's ears. I can't wait to this. We're going to have the first three-person TV talk show. Pow. We bring you the second half of Peter Holzapp. Oh, I see you. You were in the DBs. Yeah. And then we played. We did a show at Irving Plaza on Halloween in 1978. And we were horrible. We were so bad. How bad? So bad that we went back to our rehearsal space for six months and did not play out again until we got our oh, show. Wow. <laughs> That's bad, y'all. <laughs> and but we did. We got it straight. Now we would shed it as the jab. I, I want to ask a, a detail about so bad. So when you're up there on stage and you're you you're so bad, you're gonna go into your hole for six months. What are you doing up there? You're singing flat. Are you not? How bad is bad? Are you being booed? <laughs> like, what's going on? Let's see. Where do I begin? Um, guitars are out of tune. Oh. Um, amplifiers are sputtering. Okay. Vocals. Until I got to sing with your sister, Bob. Um, I, I have to say that I was a, a wayward soul as a singer and, okay. and Susan has been a great anchor for that and got me to the show what a I did. far better singer. But in the DBs and the early DBs, it's sort of like 
You're you sing. No, you sing. <laughs> no, no, you you no, sing in yeah, tune. Bro, Somebody have, sing in yes. tune. Nobody in the DBs had a velvet voice, but these guys all sang their asses off and expressed their songs better yeah. than a great singer could, in my well, opinion. Well, you know, we got compliments like I've never heard singing like that. Stop. Yeah, not not to downplay your experience, but we kind of had that experience when our brother Bill died and me, Paul, and John were going in there. You remember that you sing, you sing, you sing. No, you sing, you sing. You sing. Susan's the only one singing on Cocaine Drain. But anyway, uh, that was funny. We can so, dig it. Yeah. But, but I know oh, yeah. it's, it's the hitter that you think if somebody could get this baseball hitter under control, he could hit home runs. But he's <laughs> flailing all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, Hold. So so you're getting a little more serious. You you you're we're playing. We're you're playing. playing. It's you're happening. Right. You're making buck. You're getting uh, so you're playing. What are you playing? What instrument are you playing? Well, I, you know, as with every band, I've never, I've only recently started a band, but every band I've ever joined, I've joined as the keyboard player. Okay. Got you. What is your favorite instrument? What is your favorite guitar. instrument to play? <laughs> guitar. What's that? Guitar. Oh, guitar. Okay. It's portable. I got to let people know if they don't, Peter plays everything. He's a, yeah. he's quite a musician. You know, he's, he's made his way with the mandolin. He's gone as far as anybody can with a mandolin. Yeah. <laughs> 40 and mandolin. Being R.E.M. and Hootie. So, Ham you know. And oh, and can I share an aside story about the mandolin and Peter since Paul yeah. brought it up? Because I'll never forget it. We were recording Global and this song called uh, You've Got No Time and uh, Peter came up with their, an arrangemental suggestion of starting with the mandolin. And we said, yeah, all right, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. So he's out there in the chair and we're all in the booth. And so he starts explaining explaining to us what he, what his idea is and we're not getting it. We can't get what he, no, it, it's this rhythm thing he had that was going to work for all the chord changes, for all the rhythm changes. Yeah, dee, 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 dee. And, and he's trying to sing it to, and I can't, I can't imagine the dunce looks he's staring back at me because he finally goes, "Look, y'all, want, will you just start the tape?" That's for cool. So we started the tape, and he just starts this thing. Didn't even count it off. This, if you go to Global, listen to the song, the intro. He just starts playing that, and the track laid in on it perfectly. And I only then did we understand what what he heard in his head that he couldn't say in words so we could hear in our head and that was a great yeah. experience i just wanted to yeah. that with it was everybody. a wonderful experience for me too and basically all i did was i just had a i had a pattern of three notes over the count of four so every four every four measures of that it would circle back around and get back and anyway just listen to it you know i've always <laughs> since i'm so glad we have this visit today i always wondered what was going on mathematically with this guy and he okay. just explained it he did i'm so glad you had a little personal scratch he put three over four and it worked and that's why we were confused holly you look like you had something well i just want to Things. get these in um yes. and so peter and this is i'm not digressing but we're going to go to another thing and that is okay. songwriting okay what, what i want to know from you is do you and it might be both i don't know but do you do your best work when you're just sitting at home and you you know you're having fun uh, willing and out a, a song okay or do you rather have somebody call and go peter look at we're going to go in the studio in two months we need 15 songs or we need 12 songs so we need to start writing now is that another that's another kind of scenario for songwriting what, what are you well i've never had the latter scenario presented to me um but my, I think that most of my songs are fairly organic in the sense that they appear, the ones that I trust the most are the ones that I don't labor over. The ones that I trust the most are the ones that sort of come of a piece. You know, Susan, oh. that song that the Continental Drifters do, Daddy Just Wants It to Rain, yeah. which is a it's ultimately it's a pretty simple song, but it's got a lot of verses. And I was sitting out in the in the studio on Paris Avenue in the heat out there, and I just they were just bang, bang, bang. And by the time I was, I came back in, I had the whole thing. So that's the kind of stuff. That's the kind of experience that I feel like I trust the most. Not to say I don't. Okay. 
Can I, and I want to follow up on that, Paul, yeah. because um, as Peter, you said, you know, you haven't, you hadn't had that ladder given to you. Hey, I need, we're, we got a record deal. We're going to, I need songs, whatever. But I do know that you participated in something I couldn't because of the radio. Um, there was a series going on that, 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 that was a challenge. Um, uh, radio for Sound Club? Yeah, it was a song club and, and everybody was challenged to bring a song a week or something yeah. like that. That and was probably the know. closest to that kind of asking to come up with something. We share that with us, please. That was a lovely um, project that was started by uh, a friend of the Continental Drifters, Kate Jacobs, herself a fantastic songwriter and business person. Um, and uh, Dave Schram, a great guitar player, plays with Yola Tango. And our dear friend, Nicholas Hill, who was the disc jockey for the Music Faucet for many years on WFMU. And their basic idea was to come up with a songwriters collective of like a dozen songwriters and everybody contribute a song, a new song a month and put it together as podcast. And this is a great idea, you know, and it called it the Radio Free Song Club. And Dave Schramm wrote a, a um, theme song for it. How many songs did you turn in i turned in as far as i know i didn't miss an episode okay so i think i turned in 32 songs maybe dude oh, I know, and I not know all of them are great songs but the idea I know. was do well, something I a, all right 32 this is, this is like writing on demand right so Correct. you're writing on demand that's a little bit, of, yeah. It can a be. A little so, bit. So after about song 25, did you think maybe this month, yeah, you know, I wrote that one 10 years ago. No one's ever heard. I think I'll throw that one in. I mean, how do you yes, do it? Yes, Bob, I did that. Yeah. I, I, nice. I, I didn't mean to bust yes, you. Yes, I did. I was just curious. Hey, <laughs> I, I, have a I, sure I, had to finish, I had to finish the vocals on a song in a in a <laughs> in my car at the campground that my family was at in Chincoteague in the middle of the night when everybody was asleep and I had to sing it really <laughs> quietly. Turn it in. Turn it in. <laughs> okay. Well, so, but, so, for art. Paul, go, go ahead, Polly. Well, I, I'm sorry, you know, this is all picking away at my notes, but but I, I, ha I didn't want to lose you here. So what was Game Day about? What was What is that song about? Game Day? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, First of all, let's just preface that by saying that I've spent a lot of time in the company of Hootie and the Blowfish, who are very big sports fans. And I mean, really seriously, sports fans. Like one of the lines in their songs is, even the dolphins make me cry, but they didn't mean the fish. No. Yeah, no, I knew that. Well, the girls but, think, oh, it's so sweeties, <laughs> those dolphins. Now, by the way, game day, Go ahead, Peter's, sorry, keep going. Is Peter's another historical set of game day is Peter's, I think, second solo album. Okay. That's correct. In, in 2018, that, that thing came All out. All right. So, 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 so to ahead, answer Polly's carry on there. To answer Polly's question, I would say that it was it's that it's that crossroads that I was kind of that I keep finding myself at over the years as to what exactly am I doing again? Why am I doing this? I do this because oh, because I have to do this. Yes, okay. This is what makes me feel good to do well then how come all the other stuff is not making me feel so good wow you just had to power through that and keep doing the stuff part of it that makes you feel good and so <laughs> that's sort of the short way of putting it i guess you know i good. mean there's very some good. Very, that, that that album is really all over the place emotionally there's a love letter to the continental grifters that susan sang on there's a uh, there's a song about the maintenance guy at the at the performing arts center that I worked at for years. Mr. Flynn, I believe we would probably be at this, <laughs> this point. Is, this, this actually this this was uh, John. Was he a nice man or not a nice man? Oh, it depended on who you were. But it was. We have a song day. from one of our. Always a tough. <laughs> I, we have I, a song called Mr. Flynn from one of our albums about the mean yes. man who won't open up the building for you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, until he's ready to. What do you got, Bob? I saw you. He's all frustrated. No, I'm, just I'm still working on getting this man to REM. Can I do this? No, no, no. What do you got? I, I see you. I see you. We want to get to REM and Hootie and the Blowfish and the Continental Drifters. We've got a lot to go through first, but I, um, I really don't want to give up on the DBs yet because I have questions because so to me, to me, the DBs, this is your shop. This is your front 
you guys, all right, you're a duo. That's cool. That's a duo. That's okay. But, and, and you do have great recordings. You have a genre you, you embraced, you embraced even jangly. I hear the word jangly pop, you know, that this is not like Paul said, the contrast of what you were playing versus what you were listening to and what you're going to record was quite different. But yes. it seemed with the DBs that, man, you had a shot uh, more than once. It seems, I mean, you're on IRS at the end it, with a real label and real good recordings and a real yeah. good history, a real good history that has sounding like the cars, sounding yeah. like the cars and Tom Petty. You're yeah. like on the cusp. It seems. Yeah. So what's going on? I, we know what happened in our life, why sometimes things didn't work out, but, and it did work out because you're critically acclaimed and that is a good thing. It really is. But what happened? I think um, it was difficult because, first of all, the vocals were the thing that really were was ultimately kind of hard to reconcile. You know, if you look at a group like R.E.M., who have a lead singer who is absolutely identifiable, yeah. and that's what he does, and he does it better than certainly better than anybody else in his band but but you know on yeah. a world class love and i just was not that kind of singer chris and i weren't those kind of singers well i was going to say I'm neither was chris and neither was yeah. no. you know we made it you know we make an interesting sound to two of us. do you think that's that contributed to why it didn't become because i like the, yeah, the hulks absolutely. listen I, when i heard the dbs though and this is these are ears that know I didn't never I never listened to that and went, oh ouch. <laughs> Me either. Me right? Either. I wasn't yes, I wanted to address this, Bob. But this Go is ahead, a Paul. subtle, this is a subtle okay. thing. I get what you're saying, Peter, but yes. I never listened to anything you've done and said, you know, if they just got a front guy lead singer, this yeah. band could Thank make you. It. That's what I meant. The songs yeah. you're, you're into the song listening and the songs, and it's all about the songs for me anyway. And, That's and, what it was for me too. And I think we just after a while it was like Look, this is what this is what I got dealt. This is what you're getting dealt. You know, I suffer. So not so much. Art. It's your turn. Not but so even much. You know, it's good. Look at all the times you got back. I mean, what as recent as what 2000? You, you guys don't give up. I think there's still a future for the D. <laughs> You've been talking to Chris, haven't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, never you know, says die. I no, never say die is true. Never uh, say never. <laughs> the 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 issue right now that we're trying to figure out is we are um, trying to get our catalog back if we can. Um, we're all tied up with uh, a, a giant conglomerate that you all know well as well, and uh, so all okay. of our stuff is off of streaming services. So that being said, we sort of don't exist for the moment, but hopefully we will exist again at some point soon. And it's a great band. And it's a great, it was a great way to grow up. I love them. And Stamey Holsapple, you know, just you guys. I mean, look, like you said, Peter, you're one of the best songwriters of our time. There's a lot. So it's not, but, but to be in that is also a lot. Okay. It's Thank just, it's, it's, it's Dwight Twilly. Great song. There were so many people that nobody will ever really know how great their work was on account of how big everything I feel. And then personal choices and, and personalities, et cetera. So you and Chris are not destined for, for duo hood and, and MTV videos of your cute selves. Oh, and we're going to play a wedding next year. No, but I just mean. You never so, know. You're a punk. You so when you're realizing that, when do you start going, well, I got to make a living at this or, or how do you wrangle this, this well, next moment, the, which is, I think is REM, if I'm not well, mistaken. The next, the next moment is sort of, Map. yeah, sort of wrapped around that, that having been friends with REM for years and hung out and I opened a couple of tours and the DBs opened some tours for them as well. And they were very big, supporters of wow. ours they were in fact the ones that helped us land the deal with irs records right now, on the okay. other side of that was that as soon as we did they moved to warner brothers records and so our biggest um champion, champion. yeah you lost your uh, champion yeah yeah and 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 it's not to say that there weren't people at irs who weren't stellar and lovely but it was like again it was that situation where we did this record right and nobody knew what to do with it. They put it out with a, a sticker. <laughs> Instead of doing a 12 inch, 
they put a sticker on it saying it's a 12 inch record with I lie and 11 bonus songs. And it's like, how stupid is what kind of marketing angle is that? What is that exactly? Yeah. So, so the writing was on the wall and, you know, I, Will and I having been best friends since we were in third grade, you know, these are all people that I grew up with for the DB to Salem and played in bands with hair and hung out, you know, but Will was like, well, we should just change our name to something else. And I'm like, but oh, but all the currency we've made with the DB. DB. Name, you know? <laughs> was there I, any thought so, ever? Was there any ever thought to going over to England because you guys were doing better yeah. actually over there than over here? Was there any Good thought? To, that was how we started. We just didn't understand why we couldn't get a U.S. deal. The first two records yeah. came out on an English label. Because we couldn't, we couldn't tie a pork yeah, chop to our leg and get the dog to play with. Yeah, you know, interesting. We, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, we had to. We thought, well, look, Blondie did it. Blondie yeah, went yeah, yeah. huge over there, and oh. then they came back and they got the deal with Private Stock. So we were like, well, this it's a route. no yeah. brainer. You know, we'll come back. Maybe Seymour will sign us to Steyer. Maybe Karen Berg will sign us to Warner's. No, no, and no. And so finally, <laughs> when it got around to the third record after Chris was gone. It's like Karen Berg was like, okay, I got a great idea. Let's get you on Bearsville Records. It's like, okay, well, we love, we love Todd and we love, I guess we love Fog Hat. Um, you know, sure, why not? They've got a Warner Brothers distribution. Yeah. And then Warner Brothers distribution went away the week that the record that we put out on. Yeah. Hey, this is what, this it. is that string of events yeah. that, that, yes. that, you either look at it that the universe is trying to tell you something, you know, or or you can and, go, wow. In those me? days, people, you are not in control of these events that are going to affect your career. And, and and these are the things that can happen to you Listen, in those yes. days. Anything can any small thing can derail you. Your your champion. Your A and R guy uh, leaves, man. Anything. You get signed. The your man who signed you. You yeah. make this big album. The everyone's behind you and your A and R guy. Your products here. You have your video. Your A and R guy left. Eh. All of a sudden, oh, yeah. no, sorry, it anymore. it's all over. You get shelved. They called it getting mm -hmm. shelved. Member holes. <laughs> okay, so it's eighty eight. The DB's a break quote unquote break broke up but you never really did but you did okay and, and now up on the docks that night we was agreeing it was best <laughs> okay and, um, and i got an email i got a i got a phone call from jefferson holt who was the manager of rem at the time and said so i don't know what you've got going right at the moment you could probably see me thinking I've got nothing going at the moment. Um, <laughs> and he said, would you like to come out and play keyboards and guitar with us? There's that keyboards thing again, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Always got it in my back pocket. And I'm like, let me think for a second. Sure. <laughs> Where do I go? And so- and At what point is REM in their career when this call came? Yeah, good question. Is they are touring behind the last IRS record, which is... Does it have a hit attached to it so we'll know? Finest Work Song uh, is... I, God, I, Stand. I want to say it's Document. I want to say the band, the, the record was Document. It's the one okay. that was produced by Don Gaiman, who ended up producing the Hootie stuff. And actually first produced... The first thing he produced was Long May You Run by the Steels Young Band. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's a great song. Anyway, mm -hmm. getting back on track. So we rehearsed in Louisville, Kentucky, and we flew to Tokyo, and we started you flew to Tokyo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So do they now have an album that they've just completed? What is going to become a hit? Oh yeah. That we do know. Not to the not to the degree of losing my religion. Okay. Yet. But this so is you're the album before losing my religion. You're this going is before out. they jump ship to Warner Brothers. Okay. So, before so you go to Tokyo people and all that. No, I take it back. I take it back. Excuse me. This is after they've jumped ship. This is the Green Tour. Yeah, this it's is the, green the first tour record that they did for Warner Brothers. Okay. Um, we opened some of the dates on the Document Tour. That's where I was getting confused. But okay, I you're good. With them as their extra, as their musical supplement, I think is correct. Right. I have a question. Yes. Uh, because we're jumping fast forward. Sorry. I want to go back to you got the call. You said yes. And you and then you said, so we did some rehearsals and went to Tokyo. So 
as a musician that's going to step into this already well-oiled machine okay so now you're going to go in you've learned the material all on your own before you got to the rehearsals correct right okay you know what songs they're going to play you know that ahead of time right i know what i'm going to play on the songs i have an idea okay at least from the rehearsals okay uh, getting information michael didn't really come to a lot of rehearsals but i rehearsed with pete bill and and mike and they kind of helped guide me through stuff and tell me things that they wanted to hear but mostly i was left to my own um okay when you arrive is it like a so it's a small segment of the band rehearsal you're going to be working with it first to go over your parts not the whole band well just not the singer just not the singer. No. Okay. Just right. not the singer. So, no. so you, learn, you know, you learn the songs, you learn the arrangements. Yes, and I yes. come in with charts for everything. As Susan will tell you, I am the chart mm-hmm. maniac. You now you also head. know. Go ahead, Bob. You got your own system of that chart business? Is yeah. that well, it's just, you know, it's like A Easy. slash slash slash. E slash slash slash. Nothing. Right. Well, no, that, man, nothing. I don't so do the, like, the national number system or anything like that. But, but no, so listen, when you're joining these guys, you know already in the band who? Who are you pals with? We'd already hung out. We hung all out a lot. Okay. They, had, um, they had actually, Jefferson had called me at one point when he first started managing REM. And he said, I think we want to go record someplace, but we don't know where. And I said, well, Mitch has just moved back to his parents' house and started drive-in studio there. And I, he would be, he's kind of a- That's in Winston-Salem, correct? Yes, he's okay. a, and then the, in, in Rural Hall, which is right on the, the countryside of Winston-Salem. So I said, you know, Mitch is the kind of guy who, if you know what you want, he can get that for you. If you don't know what you want, he'll help you figure out what to oh. get. And he can make it happen. And he's a he's a just a great guy. And they were like, okay. So they went down and they cut Radio for Europe and Sitting Still and another song down there. And they liked working with Mitch. And so we we all just sort of you know suddenly the the Winston Salem axis collided with the Athens axis. And so okay. the the Southern Power Pop, you know, yes. fantasy power pop league began. You know, and so we would go down and play and we'd play in at, with Pylon down in Athens and stuff like that. And they'd come up, but REM would come up and hang out. We'd hang out on the Staten Island ferry and we'd go drink at the, the cheap uh, Polish bars on the Lower East Side. I want to ask a quick question. So when the DBs break up and Holes Apple gets the gig with REM, how do the rest of the guys feel? I never asked. Okay, moving right along. Oh boy. <laughs> Maybe hey, so- we'll find out. So you're you're stepping into a ready-made super machine here, man. So, and you go to Tokyo. These live shows, um, I know you opened for them, so you played for their audience. So you yeah. had that feeling in the in the back of your pocket. But was there any kind of elevation of like, this is where I always wanted to be, and I am finally here? Well, without a doubt, playing to audiences that were that enthusiastic and yeah. that deeply involved in the music. I mean, that, you know, like them or not, REM absolutely um, engenders a deep, visceral sense. They struck a nerve, for, for sure. Struck they a nerve. They have- affect people in a way that not every band does, you know? Group, groups have fans. REM had followers. <laughs> Is yeah. it- there you go. Yeah, that's a really good way to put that, Bob. Absolutely. And All so, right, so, so it was amazing to see that. And it was absolutely yeah. thrilling to be a part of that. It was yeah. so great to sit up there, you know, I felt sort of like judicial behind my Hammond B3 and piano. And you looked it, sir. Oh, I felt good. I was wearing Now listen, and you did that MTV Unplugged with the guys, right? That made you a hot shot. Man. How long is this going to go on? There was a lot of stuff that I got to do with those guys. How long did it go on for, Holtz? Um, It was a couple of of few years. Um, But we... um, You know, we got to play at the... Like a... uh, Like a private party in boston in a little tiny bar unplugged oh, fun. It had something to do with the release of the movie philadelphia okay. and something to do with bruce springsteen although bruce wasn't a part of it 
I don't know why, but it was a fascinating thing. There are all kinds of things. We played Circus Crone in 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 um, in Germany, which is where the Beatles played and where um, they filmed Vim Vendors movies and stuff. And oh, so many great. Films. Wow. So like you, that's just like like the that experience is, is outside of. Just playing the music sounds like was amazing. Oh, it was like all of the all of the dream parts of that eight year old guy watching yeah. you guys. I was like, yeah, I could yeah, Bob, it. that's right. He did feel that way. Here, I finally and, got somewhere where it makes sense to me. Yeah, the, the scale you stepped into there is a scale we can only imagine. This international scale where a group is as famous, if not more over in Germany or somewhere, and you got to experience that that worldness of it with REM, because they weren't just countryside, they were worldwide. It was kind of amazing. And these were just guys that I knew from Athens. Yeah. That we had good laughs about, about stuff and listened to like parakeet training records and drank a lot of whiskey with, you know? Was there ever a, a pathway where you, uh, were directed maybe towards that group that were going to be REM, but you just went this way and became DB and they went that way and became REM and you kind of separated no, that way or how that worked? We work? didn't really know of each other's existence, honestly, okay. even though in my freshman year of college, my friends and I hitchhiked down to Atlanta and to see a group called Roy Wood's Wizard, Roy Wood being the leader of that band, The Move. And the opening band was a group called The Rockets, with Johnny B and Jim McCarty from the Detroit Wheels. A totally amazing band. And we went down there and we were, we hitchhiked down there via Charlotte, picked up a bunch more friends, got down to Atlanta, started drinking. Oh man, so much fun. Got just riotously noisy drunk and had the best time. Saw these bands that we wanted to see, got ushered up to meet Roy Wood. I nearly threw up on him. I went running out of the grocery room. <laughs> Meanwhile, years later, I talk, I'm talking to Peter Buck from REM saying, yeah. we went to the show at the Alice Cooley's Electric Bottom and saw Roy Wood's Wizard and and, uh, and the Rockets. And he was like, you were at that show? I said, yeah, we were it was about 10 of us. We were really drunk. He said, that was you guys? Oh. Uh, so he remembered us. Shut that. up. Isn't that funny? That you were notoriously know. those drunk guys at that thing to the point those where Buck knew guys. you. Yeah. Nice work, Hulse Apple. Oh, yeah. shit. You know, it's funny when things like that catch up with you. I never have to experience that because when someone comes at me with a story like that, I blame one of my brothers and say it wasn't <laughs> me. <laughs> Odds are it was them. It wasn't All me. Right, so you, my brothers. <laughs> you have your time with the wonderful REMers, but as all things... They come to pass. Yep. Your move, what are you thinking when that's starting to wind down and where you think you might head next? And then well, what I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles having moved out there. And I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm thinking okay. about recording and I've, I've, I've got some people that want to record with me and I've got some songs. So I go to this studio that's run by this guy, Paul DeGray. And I cut some songs and I've got this drummer from New Orleans named Carla Nucio playing drums. And I've got a bass player named Eileen Markell. And I've got Dan Magoo on keyboards for some of it. And I'm playing everything else and singing, if you call it singing. And I'm hanging out at the studio and Paul DeGray says, this is some good stuff. It reminds me of something else. I'm like, you tell it. And he says, well, I can play it for you, but I can't tell you who it is. And he puts this tape on and it's like, oh, wow, what is this? This is, what is this? I don't even, I don't even understand what this is. This is so good. And you know who, you know what it was? Barry Cowsell. And I was like, hey, right. that just is like he said, I played this for you because you guys sound of a you know of a similar consistency songwriting wise. And I was like, wow, that is really that's humbling because I think this stuff is so good. And um, and that's how so you that met Barry and to you, your lovely family. 
That's right. And then I do believe you guys were going to make a record together or started some recordings. But then, as all things sometimes do, that went awry. Is that correct? Well, there are um, there are tapes that we did. We did an album's worth of recording. We did some recording out in L.A. at um, and 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 I forced him to take me to see a performance by the Cows Hills at Club Lingerie because I'd oh. never seen you guys and you Great all were playing. Days. It was I I believe that it was uh, pre Robbie days also. So would that be Cecil Cecil mm-hmm. Duke? Yeah, Cecil okay. Duke played with us Club Eight, and eight. you all were great and Barry's over there grumbling of course because but he brought him there but he brought me there and <laughs> Carlo and Carlo and I are just like this is really good and this now why good. is he mad at us <laughs> what is the problem here so so anyway so that's where yeah that moving started. right through but but nonetheless and it was a great entree and I'll always remember the first time I met Paul was outside of Uncle Studios, and uh-huh. I was going to a Cowsills rehearsal, just witnessing, and I didn't uh-huh. see you coming up behind me, and you gave me the biggest slug on the back. I just about <laughs> collapsed into the pavement. I was like, I don't, does he like me? I don't think I, he hit me. I don't think he likes me. Does he oh, like no, me? It was just his exuberant. You just had not experienced a I bam not, bam not kind of guy. Yeah, bam bam. But I've, you been know, to, where... I've been to basketball games with him, so I know now. Oh God, yeah. help us! Yeah. All right, so you work with our brother for a while. That that has its moment. Um, I know you know you work later with him when you come to New Orleans, but you you you're not reming. Um, you're you're gonna find another musical outlet. Well, yes, and and like I say, my friend Carlo Nucio, who I knew from New Orleans a little bit, not as much as he seemed to think I did, but but everything was bigger with Carlo. Mm-hmm. So Carlo was the guy that allegedly saved my mandolin at Jimmy's from being returned to the Hooters or somebody like that, and uh, says, so oh, "No, no, I, t- I want to be all that. Way. I'll get that chance." So, but anyway, so Carlo was like, I've got this band and I'm playing and you should come hear us. And we're real good. And we got a lot of singers and a lot of songwriters. And I'm like, okay. So I went down to a little club on Hollywood Boulevard called Raji's, a little dive that had been around for years, a lot of punk stuff in there, Dream Syndicate, uh, Ringling Sisters, you name it. There's pictures of Nirvana on stage there. So I go down and there's this band and they're called the Continental Drifters. And it's Carlo on drums and Mark Walton on bass, uh, Ray Ganesho and Gary Eden on guitars and Dan Magoo, my friend on keyboards. And they are great. They are just of a, they're, they're like the real deal. They've got the whole picture, I think, at the time. <laughs> They've got the whole deal. Uh, it's like one of those things where over the years I've had those feelings like, I'd like to get in on the ground floor of this. And I felt that with these guys, you know, I mean, I, I sense it's probably like when, when, you know, in a smaller way, like when Al Cooper heard Leonard Skinner and was like, Oh yeah, I get this, you know, but I got the drifters and I was like, this is so great. This is marvelous. Carl, I'll come down and see you. He says, well, Ray can't play next week. So will you come and sub on guitar? I was going to say, when did, because there were plenty of musicians, About when did week. one guy not be there and then you're there and then one guy not be there, then you're there? When I think it was happen? the next week I got drawn okay. in. And it was me and Dave Catching. Right. And so it took it took two brawny men to replace Ray Ganesha for that. Okay. Week. So you guys uh, do. But we learned it, you know. And, right. And then so- I. That was like getting inside of it. You know that thing? It's like you can listen to It's like I was thinking about this in terms of the cow sales. It's like when I played with you guys at that show where Bobby Sherman was an EMT at the show. Oh, yeah, and, outdoors, and we did the Nowhere Man. benefit. <laughs> yes, we did Nowhere Man. And your brother John schooled me on how badly I had played the bass line on that. He said, it is a song within a song. It does this. This is what you have to do to make this song sound right. And so... I got inside of the drifter stuff by playing it suddenly. And I was like able to really sense more nuanced parts of it by being a part of it. And then of course, eventually by singing with the group, you know, because that's a whole other deal. But um, that was the beginning of it. And then I 
took them into a recording studio and we did some demos and and by that time peter and i had started dating uh and vicky and i were i was <laughs> sleeping on her couch up in uh, the canyon and i said to her man there are these guys this band that this Peter guy I'm dating, who she knows exactly who he is. I think she was maybe even at the show that you saw. But anyway, we started going down to Raji's just because Holes Apple and I started dating and Vic was re uh, recently uh, widowed. Uh, she was engaged and her boyfriend had died. So we're just two chicks out on the town in Hollywood in the 80s. There we are. Yep. And go ahead. I'll tell you, I was surprised. This is how uninformed I was about the beginning of the Drifters. When Peter started saying, then I went down to the club and there's he started naming everybody. He didn't name any, you or Vicky or we weren't Russ there. Or, no, these were I all know, I'm no. seeing that in the history. Yeah. So go ahead. We take call us. It, this was we the all male, it, all ashtray drifters or yeah, five. Thing it is, yeah, it was. And 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 30 years later, anybody who was in that lineup and the post lineups, and there have been many, are known as auxiliary drifters okay, okay so lindsey bucks and stevie nicks have not shown up but take us to exactly. this continental drifter to that one so okay. yeah go ahead, you want to take that or... due diligence well we played a bunch we did the recordings at um this weird studio and um tried to shop it around and um their little record label down in New Orleans decided that they wanted to do something with us and they happened to be people, people that I had worked with before in the DVs and it's like well you know they could make something happen maybe I don't know let's see what we can do and Carlo and Ray wanted to go home LA did not do them right it no was boy, soulless no. it wasn't what they thought and they wanted to go back home so the carry on holes so yeah so there was all of that and then we ended up making a record and Ray had to leave because of some physical issues. And then Gary had to leave. And then, well, I, uh, you know, I didn't realize this until I talked to Sean Kelly that apparently they threw Danny out of the band to get me. I this heard that later too. The first keyboard player he mentioned when he first went down to see the drifters, all those people, well, the keyboard player, Danny Magoo, his friend, he ended up replacing pretty quickly, if I'm not mistaken, after you started hanging out. And I never knew how that happened. I just heard that. Well, I got uh -huh. asked to join, I got asked to join the band, but I was like, no, but I'll produce a record for you. Hmm. So that's when we ended up doing that thing at the, the, the uh, Doug Messenger's place. The tacos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so I feel bad about that, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's for 30 years ago. Old Apple, no. Nonetheless, yeah, <laughs> I have new things to feel bad about. <laughs> good, good um, man, good man. Always, um, but you know, it just was. It got more and more like a family, and I learned a different way of communicating because everybody in the Drifters talked over everybody else, and the DBs had been this like totally like passive aggressive, silent oh kind of fan and not the drifters drifters yelled at each other and you don't understand they were very intellectual those dbs guys and the drifters were more like the cow seals when they want to share yeah. a thought it was a, it was a, it was a feral nature to the drifters yeah and family very family it. yeah but it was a it was a little nerve-wracking i didn't know what to make of it i think i finally i loved it for that very same reason i was yeah. used to that kind of mayhem but, with these guys <laughs> but then we ended up in a band in New Orleans and we ended up doing three really, I think, exceptional records, uh, Continental Drifters, Vermilion and Better Day. And I think that they're all three testaments to what a good band we were. Yeah, um, I listened of the band, recently yeah. to all yeah. of these because we we're trying to figure out what to do. We got a book coming out about the band soon. Compilations, Good. compilations, compilations. <laughs> and we're so we're, we we want to try to remind people that because we've done some shows in the last couple of years, like at South by Southwest and over Jazz Fest this year. And frankly, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, Susan, but I think we really enjoyed playing the music and enjoyed each other's company tremendously and felt like it was a good experience he's trying a short story well, saying no, drifters will make another record well here's the we deal enjoyed it. here's the deal with the drifters I, in my opinion the continental drifters have every right to step forward and claim their their legacy in terms of 
of being a part of what was going on down there and, and part of a New Orleans scene and part of a, okay, I hate to say critically acclaimed, whatever, critically acclaimed, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. That, Another one like, of those bands. <laughs> you have every right to, to to step up and say, look, we had a legacy and we're claiming it. I think it. so too, Bob. We're claiming Thank it you today. And uh, you have proof of it, and it's all good. I think it's there's always time, always time. I think that there's. I think that that good quality music will find its songs. Good songs we yeah. know about it, dude. We started writing on the road. I mean, I had this pipe dream of a last Calso record. I had an idea of more of a, a personal nature, yeah. and then me, him, and Bob and Paul, and I just started writing all these songs. And it's like well, the next know, thing we're gonna do is record them. It's just what you do. I think, you know? I think it is. And, you know, Bob, I was going to say also that I know that the, that after Global, you were sort of on the fence about what you wanted to do. I think that you felt like you had put a lot of heart and soul into the making of oh, that. That was the last one. Yeah, yeah, that was going to be the last one. And so when yeah. I heard that, I was like, oh, I wish it wasn't. For sure. No, it hasn't been, you know. And yeah. I should also say, I should mention this because I did want to say this. That, that Bob Castle has been a tremendous inspiration to me as a solo acoustic guitar player from watching him at the Pickwick Pub numerous times and watching how he voiced his chords and how he could make a single acoustic guitar and a single vocal. Basically, you had that sort of mental uh, follow through to make it sound like the whole band was there. He did. And I want to thank you for that, because I was one of those, that was one of those, oh, I need to rethink this moments for me. And, and I you know what? If I, I didn't know that, that. Well, I, I didn't say, know. Go ahead, Susan. No, you go. I didn't know that, but I know Peter always approached his solo things with, with a lot of trepidation. And as the years went by, you became a badass at the very same thing. You're just saying. Yeah, because you I was just going to say, Peter, that. I, I would say that's more a national, a natural evolutionary technique that you have 10 fingers and six strings. That's your math. So it's <laughs> like, you know, uh, certain guitars gave you bass where others didn't give you bass within a strum. Yeah, you look for that kind of thing. But yeah, you did it too. The, if you're like Bob alone, you will get the most out of 10 fingers and six strings in a voice. <laughs> and you don't well, have anybody, you can't turn around and blame anybody when something goes wrong. <laughs> You know, but, you know, right. ukulele was good for that for me also, because that's only four strings. Yeah. You really have to make every note count. Go so on, let, Susan. You want to steer this someplace. I, well, yeah. I mean, we're, we're to the, I would like to know. Okay. So Continental Dirtures, we've got a book. There's going to be a compilation that will come out to match that um, of old stuff of ours on our, all of our favorite record label. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, well, I, if it ever comes to fruition, but so that's a wonderful thing. And I hope the drifters get to make a new record at some point. And I know we will at least I a final like that very much, you know, I know I we will. Makes, but it, that's my heart. Good to hear you say that, you know, but besides that, Holsey, yeah. you're not even close to done. These guys are like, because you're only a few years older than me. Our brothers are a few years older than that. Yeah. So with that in mind, what do you see for you personally as something that you would, you know, other than the drifters or or whatever even thing you might even still be having going on with the guys and, you know, with Stamy or, or Rigby? What do you see? Like, how do you want that? How do you want that? You just want to keep rolling like a stone and doing it I like that. To do with the back forty, in other words. I don't want to put it that way, but but well, I just can't see you musically ever stopping. So, do you have a vision, or are you just being you and organically rolling? I am at a point at the moment where I'm not doing a lot of live shows because I still have a kid at home. Um, my wife is working at Duke Libraries, loves her job, got a great job there. I'm nice. happy and very satisfied right. being the domestic engineer. Um, at one point, I think I probably didn't sound all that happy, uh, but you know, I've become very circumspect about it and it's been really good for me. And, and I've tried to think of other things that I can do. I've been trying to think, I'm 67. Yes. And I'm trying to ascertain if I am, okay, first of all, I went to the Barbie movie. We went to see the Barbie movie. Okay. It was very elucidating. In, okay. in that the idea of Ken having to figure out how to define himself as something other than Barbie and Ken. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sort of and Peter, 
of some sort. I don't know. Uh, the DBs and Peter, the drifters and Peter, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, Hulls Apple and Stamey. I, I, it's like, okay, I got that. But what, what am I? Who am I now? And do I want to be something else? Do I want to do other things? And I, because I, I can draw and I can write no. and I can draw. <laughs> you can cook too. And I, thought, so, so I, I, and I also thought, you know, if I could just, maybe if I just sit down and try to write songs on piano for a while, because of all the songs that I, anybody that heard me play, wow. every song I've almost written that's been on any record has been a guitar song with the exception, I think maybe of where does the time go, which is the last song on the last continental Drifter record so far. And, but I don't bring them up because I don't feel as comfortable showing them. So I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make piano songs. I'm going to write some piano songs. I'll be Ben <laughs> Folds or something. Um, and, and, and so I wrote a song and I recorded it. Right. And I've got the studio out in the back, the little, the, the hit shed. Say yep. that. The hit shit. Um, and 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 I love it. And I write the song and I've got it all recorded and I've got kind of complex drum parts and this and some harmonies. And I listen and I listen and I listen and I realize that I've written that same song on guitar six months ago. No way. And I'm like, sorry about that. Well, so I pick up the guitar and angrily write another song. And the song that I wrote is a great song. And I and in answer to your question, mm -hmm. it may be the title track of a solo record. I think I think I could do another solo record, but I just can't. It's hard for me. I'm so close to the material. It's really hard to determine if there's an album in all of it. But you know what, Halls, that might be the very album that everybody would like to hear. Well, I've done that, you know, game day, you brought up game day earlier, Paul, but game day is, was my experiment in, I'm going to play everything myself. I'm going to play everything on this record myself, except Susan's going to sing one song with me and I'm going to get a guy in because I can't play trombone. And so that's what it was. And I played all the drums and I played all the guitar. You've done that. And stuff, so I've done that. And, you know, I mean, when the mastering engineer said to me, you know, we can't, the drums are recorded so poorly, you can't master this for vinyl. Oh, oh, okay. Uh -huh. So my thought is, oh. my thought is, Ouch. I think maybe if I do a solo record, then I would do it with a rhythm section in a studio, oh, yeah. hopefully with a producer and an engineer that can shoulder some of the... It would be different. Well, you know, it might be the best option for presenting the unpresentable, if you will. Mm. You're yeah. getting our listeners very excited because this kind of talk for music people, I know we're going to get all kinds of, what's he talking about? When is he doing it? Is he doing it? Well, he because doesn't, he doesn't know when he's doing it right now. He's in the, he's in the, the, um, we're in the, in the, Susan's asking him, so he's he's formulating. <laughs> well, I am formulating because I don't want to. I want to have songs for the new Drifters record. Well, they're always put aside. I, whenever I'm writing, I always know if I have a Drifter song. It doesn't belong anywhere over here with me, yeah. and it doesn't go to Cow Sills. It's got to be a Drifter song. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I've got a couple that are in that pile right now, but I just want to make sure that I'm putting the right things on a solo record. And well, I know that I need I know that I need to write some faster songs. So I'm writing a faster song right <laughs> as we speak. Um, well, I know that our our listeners have really enjoyed this. And I hope that this might even be one of our more funner ones where we sometimes put them in two parts. What well, well, yeah, Bobby got something your fingers up. Question. We're not of course you do. Keep yet. going, guys. Oh, you sound like you're saying goodbye. I got I'm not saying goodbye to him yet. No, no. I'm just Peter, here's my I have two questions. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I want to get when the drifters ended. I'm trying to fit, get where Hootie and the Blowfish are going to come into your life and, and your history. Okay. Take me there. But the other. Oh, way, yeah. I forgot about that. That's the quick fun. One you can answer is this as a, as a well, as a renowned. Yeah, you know, I hate the word side guy, you know, but anyway. That's what I am. All right. Supplemental okay. musician. As that and guy, that can, a multi 
a musician, you know, you, you get more than a keyboard player with you. Everyone knows that eventually. And you're a multi-instrumentalist. You're, you I can save me a lot of money. In all bands. Yes, indeed. But does a guy like you, or do you just kind of live with that off on the shelf? You don't think about it. But if I was that in Hootie and I'm in REM, I got my own thing. I'm critically acclaimed. Do you sit around waiting for the big groups, the REMs and the Hooties? Do you sit around kind of once in a while thinking, but what if that phone's going to ring and these guys want to go grab a million bucks for each other and put a tour together? And I would, I would haven't been successful with both those bands in my history. I'd be waiting. I would be hoping REM and Hootie could go out there. Now, maybe you know the people and that ain't ever going to happen because I know bands like that. But I'd wonder about that if I had your talent. Well, we did have a moment of that with the 2019 Hootie tour, I would say, that that was a real victory lap for the band in a lot of ways. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember really that. That Unexpected. was a huge article in the New York Times that was basically like, it's okay to like Hootie and the Blowfish, you know, after having been sort of the punchline and the declining record sales and what have you. And and so we got to go out and we played these amphitheaters and we were setting wow. attendance records. And so that was a beautiful thing. But... <laughs> You know, I don't I don't actually sit around waiting for that because I don't think it's going to happen. I think that the the um, the sea change that's occurred in music is such that I don't know. You know, it's OK to say, yes, I'm going to make a solo record. It's also OK to say, I don't know who I'm making it for. I'm making it for me. And I just right. somebody will Those find the it. And they, they, am I Americana? Am I triple yes, A? You are. Am I yeah, punk you're rock? Americana. You're what Americana. Yeah. No, well, um, okay. I would like to interject here because this is a really good story. And it also answers to Bob when you said, do you sit around? Are you wait, wondering if these guys do a thing? Do you wait for something like that? I would like to uh, share with the, everyone how Peter got on with Hootie and the Blowfish. Continental Drifters were being the Continental Drifters. They just always kind of do that. But there was a baby at home and a phone call came into my kitchen one day and it said, Hello, this is Mark Bryan. I'm in a band called Hootie and the Blowfish. I don't know who they are yet because they're okay. about to blow up. <laughs> and I'm change like, your name. <laughs> Go ahead. Dude, I'm like, and he's talking fast because he's nervous as hell because he's calling. He goes, I, 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 I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm, I'm trying to, to reach Peter Holsapple. If this is if this is not his number, I'm I'm in a band called Hootie and, the, and I'm just is this is this his house? Are you, is this is this Susan? And I'm like, dude, little boy, man, slow down. I'm like. Yes, Peter Holsapo lives here. You are who with what? And he goes, I'm sorry. I'm in a band called Hootie and the Blowfish. Bucket about it, about Long story short, my band saw Peter Holsapo playing with R.E.M. in 19, blah, 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 blah. And we said to ourselves at that show, if we were to ever get a record deal and we get famous, we were going to call Peter Holsapple and he was going to become our side guy like R.E.M. had him. And he's telling me all this. I'm in a kitchen. Miranda's in a walker. Holsapple, I don't even think he's there. He's not. Or I would have handed the phone. And I'm like, copy. OK, so you're about to make the big time. You want Peter because you saw him with the big time in R.E.M. And you want him to become your big time side guy. Is this correct? He goes, yes, ma'am. That is, wow. You. Wow. That's great. I go, OK, I'll tell him. Click. Holesapple comes home. I say, Holesapple. Never heard, but we knew a guy, Tim Summer, who knew. Anyway, long story short, Peter grapples with domestic life and touring, and his musician wife says, get your butt out of here. Drifters will keep, because there's always a drifter, much like there's always a cow sale. They mm -hmm. come, they go, they have seasons. It's no big deal. Go have some fun, be a hot shot, make some money, bring it home to the baby and me, and it's okay. He was so worried about leaving and having that. But that was a pretty cool, I mean, I'll never forget it, because it went kaboom, right with him sitting side saddle. Yay. It was kind of amazing. Yeah. The first thing I got to do with them was I went down to Charlotte and played on their cover of a Led Zeppelin song. Hey, hey, what can I do? And I got to be I got to like uh, have my inner John Paul Jones come out with the mandolin yeah. and the Hammond organ. And so they were like, OK, he they can do used you so rightly. They 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 while they were becoming a little band watching R.E.M., they were listening and then they had a spot waiting for you in their music. Okay. So you're, Go you're you're going into the Hootie world before Hootie's big, right? Well, they had just, they had 
started selling records. They had been on David Letterman. Their record had been out for oh, okay. six to eight months before. Six and they to eight months. I didn't of- know. I never heard of them. Okay. Yeah, no, nobody had ever heard of them. Nobody's hearing of these guys. They might be out, Letterman, but nobody's knowing. Letterman them. was the main reason. And that's why they went back on. That's why we played on the last week of the Letterman show, too. So, Very nice. but, um, yeah, it was. that's another group where you can love them or you can hate them. I love. I can't them. imagine why anybody would hate them, but I get it, I guess. But remember, Adam Duritz was so cute, and I don't care what he says, and he can call me. He used to get upset because his band would be mistaken with Hootie and the Blowfish. What was Adam's? Why did oh, Mister? Jo- I don't know what. Do you remember Mr. that? Jones, yeah. He gets so upset because sometimes somebody thought Mister Jones was Hootie and the Blowfish. It just used to piss Adam off. Anyway. But Counting yeah, I, I will say that the, the years with Hootie were were wonderful ones, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and I took some years off for a while um, as as it became obvious that I really wanted to spend more time with the Drifters. And and I needed to get off the road because I was, you know, it was hard. It was a uh, roads rigorous. Well, yeah, that and the fact that it was a, basically like a rolling liquor store. Oh, and well, so that, that is, was yeah. kind of really hard for me at that point. Yeah. Um, so I. Um, you took care of business, Mr. Holsapple, don't you? Yeah, we got it. You know, we we made we it. it. And they, the drifters were, uh, you know, uh, Vicky and I often say this, that the drifters were sort of our reward for dealing with the other bands that we've been in. And I oh, still feel that that's way. sweet. I can it's understand cool. that from you guys out there getting pummeled. Well, you know, you know, we, we, we councils tried to get out there and get pummeled. It just didn't work for us in the 80s. We, look, we, <laughs> 90s. Looked, at, we looked at you guys, you know, Vicky and I are not so different. We too. And mm-hmm. then we both admired you, but we also, we didn't have, you know, when in the drifters, we had the, sort of the more, Hey, let's go make a rock hit record. And you were sort of like, yeah, whatever, you know, let's just play. Let's just do that. Let's not, just, let's not set ourselves think, up for jack shit and just have some fun. That's why I dream this band. I think that I, and I think that, I think that Vicky and I both scratched our heads over that sometimes because mm-hmm. we, we didn't feel like you weren't a, you were, it wasn't like she's either for us or Guinness. Well, no, but, and it's but, funny because you know, I always but, felt that that's what everybody's attitude was, which is why I joined. I had no idea anybody was looking for anything other than a, yeah. a good song. I just song. wanted, I think, I think more than anything else, with the commercial abyss that the DBs turned into, I guess my hope was that we could make the That's continental something. drifters into something that could perpetuate itself. And I mean, well, it just still did. Yeah, it did. Critically acclaimed. Now there, okay. if if we could move on uh, from this um, little continental drifter sidebar history lesson we're getting here from the two former wrap members. them around bring current them around members, current we don't have forever, forever members. members we don't have, yeah for you have forever members not not former members yeah um, there are three yeah, i just want to highlight the three times where peter holsapple and the councils bonded in the special way of course the 2000 taste of rhode island concert with all seven of High us five holes we made it <laughs> going to be the last time we were together uh, he's one of the very few guest artist on global with his great mandolin work on more than one song. And uh, a more current thing that happened is we have a Christmas song coming out Christmas time, October 24th (gasps) for a holiday release. And in the Christmas time choir on that recording is none other than Peter Holsapple himself as a member of that. He was there that day when we put the backgrounds on Christmas time and in that choir. And so that's a third special moment we share with our bro in and you decorated the studio with artificial yeah, we snow <laughs> that we did and we yes, still do Christmas you should have seen my bunk this year <laughs> so that song is going to see the international worldly light of day finally with the yay christmas time and That's michael so Steele was in that choir from the bangles there were a lot of people randell churches were there from people it was a great experience getting yeah, to be on that record is a, a real high point for me so. well you're going to love it because you're going to be able to hear it it's going to come out at some point so that's going to be super oh there, yes there, there are I mean, put it out like no one's ever heard it which is true you know we all have our little world where they know your music but they want it to go so we'll see what happens yeah we'll see yeah. Paulie, right. what do you got for Mr. Holt's Apple? Anything else? 
I had I, I asked all my questions. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Okay. Fair it's enough. been amazing. Anything, anything you want to share that we should uh, make note of, or like, are I, you on social media? Are you that guy? You got Instagram. You got. Yeah, you want us to go find you places? Subscribe, thumb up, thumb down, like. You get the new uh, tech company so X, formerly known as Twitter. That's how I read it everywhere. Yeah, no, uh -huh. you know, I I finally dumped Facebook. I I do a couple okay. of things, but I don't do much at this point. I'll find you. They'll find, find you. Find it right trying to write music, trying to use the time that I would spend on social media, promoting my career, putting together a career to promote. So it seems like it well, makes listen, more you sense. Could, you could just yeah. Google. Hey, Peter, do you prefer to write? Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Peter, do you prefer to write alone or with someone else? That was his other one, yeah. Well, um, I have mostly written alone because I have very thin skin. But I will say that my, ah. um, I, I, I don't take criticism very well. Mm. I, I was known throughout the Drifters era as the professor, as in, well, he thinks he knows everything. Well, he doesn't Stop really it. know, he really doesn't know everything, but he is awfully nervous about criticism and can't figure out how to make things work very well. So I don't do a lot of co-writes. However, I will say that some of the best songs that I've ever had a hand in are songs that I've co-written. See also Drifters, which I wrote with there Susan and yeah. uh, Angels, which I wrote with Chris. And which I love. Um, they are good songs. Yeah, good good song. You do good when you pair up. You do. Cool. Well, all um, right, guys. that's it for me. All right. Mr. Hollis Apple, thank you for joining us. It has been a delight. I mean, a real delight. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Peter. What a pleasure you, to see Peter. you all again in glowing black and white. We'll look forward to uh -huh. a, a fourth special event with you, uh, certainly besides. Of course, we'll have one. one. We know we'll there will be one. All right, everybody. Yeah, everything we've talked about, you can read more about online. If you just look up Peter Hollis Apple, you can do the deep dive. It's worth it. So there you go. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. We'll see okay. you later, buddy. Love Thank you, Bob. guys. Thank Bye, you, Paul. Love you. Bye. See you, Peter. Love you, Bye. buddy. Bye.